Welcome to Trial Site News Podcast Series. Today we'll be talking to Hartmut Ehrlich and Philippe Paletti of Vabivax about their ongoing Phase 2B3 trial with ABX464 in COVID-19, which is the Mirage trial. The unique properties of the lead candidate antiviral anti-inflammatory tissue repair is to treat elderly and high-risk COVID-19 patients and more. Now, Abivax is a clinical stage biotechnology company and is mobilizing the body's natural immune machinery to treat patients with autoimmune diseases, viral infections, and cancer. Now, their technology is based on cutting edge science driven by the goal of developing therapeutics that stimulate the body's natural immune mechanisms to cure diseases. Now, we know that Abivax was formed around 2013 in France and that the product first focused on the development of a novel treatment in HIV with a lead drug candidate ABX464. But the molecule showed a strong anti-inflammatory effect in preclinical models. Hence, the company decided to conduct a phase 2A clinical study in, in ulcerative colitis and inflammatory disease. Successful data shifted the company's focus to chronic inflammatory diseases. So is this the general basis of the company? Yeah, Adrian, your description is, is absolutely correct. Abivax started with uh, the flagship product, ABX464, which uh, is derived from our um, library of uh, by now more than 2,000 uh, molecules. And it was initially selected uh, based on the uh, ability to actually reduce the viral load of, uh, of uh, patients with HIV. So it's an anti-HIV uh, molecule. And we were showing this in the clinic. And of course, in parallel, we were working around the mechanism of action. And then we uncovered this unique combination of a molecule that has both very potent anti-inflammatory properties through the upregulation of a specific uh, anti-inflammatory uh, microRNA by the name of uh, MIR124. So it's a first-in-class and novel mechanism of action that we are that we are dealing with here, and the uh, the antiviral effect uh, that we knew. Uh, but when we uh, completed the readout of the induction part of our ulcerative colitis study, the phase 2A study, which actually started exactly three years ago with, uh, in uh, end of November 2017 and had the readout uh, in, uh, in uh, September of, uh, of 2018, and when we saw the reaction uh, of the uh, KOLs, of the clinical investigators, and more in more general terms, the, uh, the IBD community, we realized that this may be a much more interesting target for the company and for patients to move forward, where there's a very high medical need. Uh, in contrast to, to, uh, to HIV, where uh, there are 27, 28 antiretrovirals on the market, and we could have probably found our niche there. But given the data in chronic uh, inflammation, we believe that this is the future for, uh, for ABX464 based on the data that we have already been able to generate. Now, can you share the story of the invention of the intellectual property? How and where did the idea for the platform and technology come from? Well, at uh, Truffle Capital, we like to start biotech companies from stellar science with emerging uh, patent application. And we sourced a very interesting technology at CNRS, which is one of the large European research institutes in Montpellier, uh, with a scientist known as Jamal Tandy. And the field of research was RNA modulation. Well, you know, for COVID nowadays, with the new vaccines, RNA is becoming a star for vaccine. Well, it turns out that RNA may be also the star for treatments of COVID-19 and for inflammatory diseases. So we decided to start the company 
And uh, once, of course, you have great science, what else do you need for a successful biotech company? You need very strong experience management in all operational R&D manufacturing regulatory areas. And uh, we proposed to Atmut Early, who was the head of R&D at Baxter Bioscience in Vienna, to join Adivax as the new CEO, moving to Paris, and he hired them a very strong team. Then the third thing you need is cash. And with my fund, we invested uh, from inception about 35 million euros. Then we decided to take the company public on Euronex, the European stock market. And we did the largest ever biotech IPO on Euronex in France, raising 58 million euros. And since then, we have continued to successfully raise cash from new shareholders, non-dilutive financing, like lately 50 million of non-dilutive financing, then recently a 20, 28 million capital raise, so that the company could have the resources to independently carry forward its R&D. And the last thing you need is a little luck. And I think Artmut and I, and the company have been blessed with a little luck in R&D and clinical trials. And we think that uh, that may continue given the stage of development of ABS-464 and ABS-196. Now, I want to talk to you guys about ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease in COVID-19. Can you share more about the status for these various medications in, the, in these areas and why Abivax's development shows it promise for superior results? A lot has happened in, uh, in ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease during the last uh, 15 to 20 years, specifically with the introduction of the novel treatments, the anti-cytokine monoclonal antibodies like uh, Yomira and, uh, and others that really benefited the patients. However, at this point in time, if you look, there are certainly a number of shortcomings related to these, uh, to these drugs. The goal of treatment is actually to make the patient symptom free. You will never cure the disease, but uh, you, uh, the, the, the goal is for the patients to not suffer from the devastating symptoms of the inflammatory bowel diseases, ulcerative colitis and, uh, and Crohn's, which can lead to a plethora of stools during uh, a given day, 20 stools, uh, often bloody, uh, abdominal pain, weaknesses, uh, et cetera. And if you look, the, uh, the, the, the treatments that were introduced during the last 10 to 15 years the percentage of clinical remissions that you see in the patients when you subtract what you observe in placebo patients uh, from what you observe in, uh, in patients that are receiving the drug is roughly around 10%. So 10% in 10% of the patients, you can achieve for some time a situation uh, where the patients uh, barely have any, any, any symptoms left. Um, if you continue treatment in these patients uh, uh, for a year, uh, patients, uh, some patients will, uh, uh, will come up with, uh, with patients, some patients will lose their remission. So in the end, overall, roughly 35 to 40 percent of the patients that are still on, uh, on study after that time, uh, you see actually uh, the absence of symptoms or clinical remission. Um, for ABX-464, and this was uh, what Philippe uh, uh, mentioned when he, when, he, uh, talked about, when he talked about it, we saw at the end of the induction period, we saw a delta between active and placebo of 25%. Uh, so 25% uh, of the patients were de facto uh, uh, in remission after you subtract placebo after two months. 
And after one year, we were actually seeing this uh, was uh, in the range of 70 to 75%. So clearly both numbers being substantially higher as what had been seen before with, uh, with the other drugs. And we believe this is one way for, uh, for AVX464 to be differentiated clinically by improving the clinical outcome of these patients. Now, efficacy is often, uh, or is, is, is always one angle to look at the drug. Safety is another angle to look at the drug. And uh, here it is well known that most of these drugs, especially monoclonal antibodies, often have side effects related to um, observations like uh, uh, the reactivation of uh, viral diseases, in some extreme cases, even, even lymphomas. And uh, these observations are typically due to, uh, to these drugs interfering with the uh, defense mechanisms of the body, specifically with a reduction of lymphocyte counts, which are sort of the first uh, warning sign that uh, something can go wrong. Uh, in the uh, in the treatment, which is absolutely what we not observe with with ABX four six four. There's not a single patient that has been uh, uh, responding with a lymphocytopenia or with cytopenias of uh, uh, specific other uh, uh, cell lines, and we haven't seen the the reactivation of. Uh, of viral diseases or, uh, or lymphoma in our patients, which makes us very uh, hopeful that uh, also the safety profile of a 464 will be better than that of uh, the classical treatments in this indication. And if you combine this with the ease of administration of the product, it's a small capsule, uh, 50 milligram capsule that you are giving uh, these patients uh, once a day. They can easily do that uh, at home. Uh, um, this is uh, safety, efficacy, and patient convenience. Um, if we are able to reproduce the face uh, to A data, which we're at the beginning of our journey into, uh, into chronic inflammatory diseases, if we are able to reproduce uh, these, ABX464 will be a very differentiated clinical product for the treatment of these patients. Now, broad strokes here, uh, ABX464 is targeting key disease areas. Could you give us a summary of each one that's in the pipeline? So I mentioned ulcerative colitis. This is clearly the front runner. And I also was saying that chronic inflammation is our absolute focus. So then it becomes natural that uh, Crohn's disease, which is the other side of the coin of inflammatory bowel disease, is a target. And uh, here, based on the strong suggestion of our international uh, advisory board and steering committee for our trial, um, we are planning to actually go straight into a phase to be three study in Crohn's disease. The original plan was to do it in a similar fashion as we did it for uh, ulcerative colitis. But when our steering committee was realizing the potential of ABX464 and the data that we generated, not only the induction data after two months, also the uh, maintenance data after one year and then after two years. And then by the way, I may just add here, the first patient, uh, the first ulcerative colitis patient is now on daily treatment for more than three years with this, uh, with this product, with ABX464. When they realized uh, the uh, potential for efficacy and also safety, and based on their experience that uh, if you consider drugs that are working in ulcerative colitis, they typically work in Crohn's disease. 
us, the mechanisms that are driving those two diseases are very, very similar. Um, they actually suggested to us, skip your phase two, don't do it to A, don't do it to B, go straight into a phase two B3 study in, uh, in Crohn's disease, because this way you will shave off uh, two to two and a half years from your, uh, from your development timeline. And therefore Crohn's disease is the next one to tackle. And uh, we are planning to get into this uh, actually pivotal trial in the summer of next year. If you look further in the universe, the big elephant in the room of chronic inflammatory diseases, of course, is uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, that's an indication that is larger than you see. You see is uh, around 6 billion worldwide. Uh, Crohn's disease is around 10 billion worldwide. But uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis is more in the, uh, in the 20 billion range. And here we are currently in a phase 2A study, very similar to the phase 2A that we did uh, in ulcerative colitis and where we had the induction readout um, in uh, September of 2018. So here now in uh, rheumatoid arthritis, the readout of this phase 2A in rheumatoid arthritis is also going to be expected uh, for the second quarter of, uh, of next year. And that will determine our next step with respect to, uh, to rheumatoid arthritis. But these are the chronic inflammatory diseases. And uh, when COVID came up in, uh, uh, in late winter, uh, early spring uh, of, uh, of this year, we realized that the, uh, that the diseases, of course, caused by the SARS-CoV-2 virus, but it is actually the inflammation that the virus causes that is killing the patients and is putting the patients into the severe respiratory problems, cytokine storm, ARDS, et cetera, that eventually is, uh, is killing the patients. And this is when Philippe and I were sitting in the office uh, mid-March last year and act, uh, in, the, uh, in 2020 and uh, actually thinking, how can we, with ABX464, with its convenient uh, uh, oral administration, how can we um, demonstrate that uh, this molecule may actually work uh, in a COVID situation and prevent the upcoming of severe disease related uh, to uh, COVID? And this is when we started the program, when we started to write the protocol and knowing from the HIV story that we discussed at the beginning of this, uh, of this interview, that um, based on the mechanism of action, there is the potential for a potent antiviral uh, effect as well. This was when we actually did those uh, antiviral studies in the, in the best virology lab in, uh, in France in Lyon, and that's when we realized that in addition to the anti-inflammatory effect, AVX464 has about the same antiviral properties that remdesivir has. And this is when we uh, were clearly driving this protocol forward in, uh, in Europe and in uh, Latin America. I think I'm gonna stop here uh, to just see whether this is clear and uh, we take it from there. So, Doctor, I'd also like to talk to you about ABX196. Uh, I know that involves cancer, and I'd like you to expand on that if you could. Yeah, ABX196 is, um, is a glycolipid that actually has shown to be a potent immune enhancer. When we talk about ABX464, this is about blocking the immune response. But there are, of course, situations where you want to stimulate, where you want to trigger the immune system because you are banking on the therapeutic effects of, uh, of stimulating uh, your immune system. And that's the situation in, uh, in liver cancer. As I mentioned, AVX196 uh, uh, was developed uh, at 
uh, scripts research. Uh, we uh, uh, licensed it in at around 2013. Initially as, a, uh, as an adjuvant for, uh, for vaccination, but then when we looked at the molecule closely in the lab, we realized that the uh, activities that we were seeing in the test tube and in animals uh, actually um, uh, really uh, profiled this, uh, this product as an immune enhancer that can be used therapeutically, uh, for example, in situations where uh, you want your immune system to be your immune system to be activated, and uh, after a number of uh, of uh, uh, preclinical experiments, we decided to go for hepatocellular carcinoma as an add-on to uh, to checkpoint inhibitor therapy. So this is uh, why we submitted the file to, uh, to the FDA who granted us the, uh, the IND. And we are now working with the Scripps Clinic, which has become uh, the, the oncology part of which has become part of MD, of MD Anderson and uh, the MD Anderson uh, uh, Cancer Center in Houston to test this molecule in patients that are actually progressing on, uh, on checkpoint inhibitors. And that's not a surprise because what do checkpoint inhibitors do? They take away the do not eat me signal on cancer cells, but they are not essentially, um, they are not uh, stimulating the body's uh, defense against uh, uh, cancer cells. And uh, what we are hoping is that with ABX464 and uh, uh, sorry, with ABX196, that uh, we are able to change the microenvironment of the tumor to not only see the effect of the checkpoint inhibitor, but to really uh, get, a, get a handle on the tumor. Because if you look at current treatment results, with checkpoint inhibitors, you get responses, all kinds of responses, not only complete responses, in around 20% of the patients. And this is what we want to, uh, what we want to enhance. And uh, this is why we are doing this study in the, this clinical trial in the US. Well, we're definitely keeping an eye on it and we're excited about the work that you're doing. So uh, let, let's shift gears here. I wanna talk about your business. Uh, we have, a, there's a lot of, different companies and doctors that watch us. And they're always curious about companies like yours and, and how you got to where you are. Um, in your case, the company is publicly traded. So it's different from that of a, of a standard biotech venture startup trying to raise venture capital. Can you share how that helps or hinders the process, uh, it being public? Well, uh, certainly. And here you recognize switching from the German accent from Artmut to the French accent of uh, Philippe. Uh, it's certainly an asset for Abivax to be publicly traded on Euronext, which is the main uh, European market, because that gives us easy and strong access to capital. For instance, we raised a few weeks ago 28 million within three days at no discount price versus the share price from uh, investors being 60% European and uh, top tier US uh, investors or 40%. However, being public does not mean we cannot decide about future because uh, Atmut and I are physicians and care very much not solely to return good capital gain to our shareholders, but also to provide innovative new drugs to patients. And this way, because uh, Truffle Capital, my fund, owns 45% uh, of Adidas, and we have Sotinova as a strong second shareholder and family offices. We were able to turn down uh, acquisition of, of Adidas in the last few months because we wanted to continue uh, to control the future of Adidas and to make sure that we could address uh, the COVID-19 uh, crisis by uh, doing the Mirage phase two, three trial with Adidas. Uh, now, in the future, we will have to decide 
uh, how uh, we continue to grow Abiba. Certainly, uh, the future, as Atmut said, is the results of the phase two B trial in the ulcerative colitis indication, uh, which is, I would say, the flagship of Abibax of the coming years. If the Mirage trial in COVID-19 is positive, and we're very prudent not to make claims at this stage until we get the results, that would mean Abibax as a publicly traded company could have a product on the market as early as 2021. Uh, and uh, in addition to clinical trials, we are making sure that uh, we would have in stock uh, products to treat hundreds of thousands of patients as soon as 2021 and millions of patients in 2022. Well, we're grateful that you guys uh, are staying focused with COVID-19, uh, all, the, all the help we can get on dealing with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Well, before we let you guys go today, what else would you like our trial site news audience to know about Abivax and its future prospects? You kind of touching on that a little bit here, but I'd like to get you to get a final word in. You know, Abivax today with ABX 464, uh, that could be a game changer for the treatment of severe chronic inflammatory diseases and possibly for the treatment of COVID-19. So we are not trying to say that, despite the fact we, of course, still have development steps, uh, to say that Abivax could definitely challenge the position of the Advi, Pfizer, Galapagos uh, companies in the field of inflammatory disease and having a strong management, great science and cash we have a good chance of achieving uh, this goal. Well, gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. We know you guys are busy and we appreciate you taking the time.